Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about making an impact. So let's get into it. So the question in question was, hi Frederick, as a senior software engineer joining a new company, how would you set yourself up for success when the entire stack is not something that you are used to and you are expected to make an impact in a short time? Well, uh, what I usually do is that I start off by doing uh, my own onboarding process. Basically, when I work in a new language or something like that, I'm fortunate enough now to have done this enough times that it doesn't really matter what sort of programming language it is or what uh, stack we're talking about. I can pick it up fairly quickly. Uh, and the thing I usually do is that I try to think in terms of base cases when I'm dealing with something that I don't really understand how it works. But the first thing is like the it's the general as I said it's my own creating my own onboarding process. So uh, it, as I've said in many videos guys it doesn't matter if you're a senior or junior or mid-level like you can be anybody basically. When it comes to onboarding when you're fresh in a company uh, you will need some assistance knowing where things are, etc., etc. If there's no documentation, etc., etc. And so, what I usually do is that my first goal is always to write a onboarding guide. It's just a checklist of things that I need to do in order to make the project work. And uh, I do that when I do the onboarding because uh, if, well, usually I find that people don't do this. Because if I can create a checklist, I first do this, then do that, then do that. If I can just get the code to a working state and then show myself like you have a reference where, all right, if I pull the repo and I don't have any of the code or anything like that, what steps do I need to take in order to be able to run the project? as is. Uh, that is very valuable not only for me if I need to do it again but it's also very valuable for other people who might be joining at a later stage because you will find it there's a term called shaving the jack where the idea behind the term is that if, if when software processes if it's deployment or whatever it is right when they get really ad hoc you have to do like a hundred weird things or do really strange things it's not streamlined in any way and it's very ineffective and you find yourself doing more and more weird stuff in order to be able to just deploy code or to debug it or start the server or whatever you're doing right and so that's why I always start by doing that just get to a state where I understand how to just run the project and once I have that working on my local machine I usually just poke around in the system a little bit. I see how the application is working. Do you, I like? Are the endpoints are behaving correctly? Uh, what is the, as I like to say, the core feature of the system? What is its responsibility? So forth and so forth. And then I do the thing that most people who have been, become, uh, well, the, the, I do do the thing that people who are complacent will not do which is that I go the extra mile in order to understand what I'm dealing with. And so uh, what I usually do is that in my spare time, I take a look at the, 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 the as I like to say, I, I want to work with a, cl a clean slate. So this is something that I do even when I debug things. Like uh, if, you ha if I have problems with say a server, like a classic one is you have a latency issue or something like that within one of your environments. What I tell people is that instead of adding logs or things like that to your running application, try to just divide and conquer and figure out which thing is not working. And in some cases it's better to just use a pure HTTP call to say a server that is unperformant or if it's a proxy or something like that to just figure out how the basics are working within the system. And I do the same thing with my coding. So if I work in a language or is something that I don't really understand, I will tinker with the language. I will take a, I will uh, subscribe to a few uh, tutorials 
or I will subscribe to a few net newsletters. I always do this. I've said that in other videos as well, guys. Like, uh, even if I don't find a certain piece of technology all that interesting, I understand that my responsibility as a software developer is to understand these things. I'm lucky now because I've done this enough times that I sort of intuitively can pick up things without having to do a lot of work. But when I'm the least be bit uh, unsure about how a language works, I did this for say when I started learning Scala for a job where I didn't know anything about Scala whatsoever and I sucked at it. So what I did is that I started creating small tinkering projects and what I usually do is that I create a REST API, I see how that works, uh, I create some unit tests with some mocking and things like that because I know that these are the do daily tasks of my job. So I create examples for myself, uh, same thing I did when I was a junior and then I tinker with these different concepts. And of course, how do I connect to a database? Uh, how do I uh, do things such as um, a network request, like how do I use an HTTP client from say from a backend server? Uh, how does the routing work and like create new routes? Uh, how does authentication work? Things like that. And I just play around with it a little bit in my own, my own time. Not you know at the large scale which is usually the state of every project that you deal with but just as a small little proof of concept that I can do this because that uh, that process helps me understand the fundamentals of how the language or the stack I'm using, how it actually works. And once I understand those fundamentals, it becomes easier for me to grasp how the more complicated uh, states are working. It's sort of uh, how, um, like, um, if you try to, as I've said before guys, if you try to understand the whole system, especially when it's a big system, it's basically impossible to do that in a short amount of time. But what you can do is that you can understand pieces of the whole and that's actually the way I argue that you should go about it if you want to be productive very quickly. So that's how I usually approach it. If you want to get productive very quickly, it's better for you to look at individual features and just make them work than it is for you to learn the whole system. So what I want you to take away from this is that the way that I usually get on up and running in a short time and start producing results in a stack that I'm not that familiar with is very simple. I start by just going back to basics. I first and foremost create a checklist of all the things I have to do in order to get the product running. That's number one. I have to be able to just run the thing and use it locally on my workstation or whatever, however it's set up right, so that I can play around with it a little bit. And then I go into experimentation mode. Usually I start by just trying some basic things out, which are core features within the system, just to see how it works. I sort of understand how the domain works. And then in my spare time, I usually take um, pick up uh, newsletters or small tutorials or something on the basics of the basics basically like being a junior again you go through the basics of the language because like it's always good to do that just to make sure that you understand all the core concepts and then I start experimenting creating very small proof of concepts uh, and I've done this a hundred times guys so I've created I always do that for every language basically create a rest API or some sort of the, something like that uh, create some authentication try out how to connect to a database with some ORM or like how do you actually bind your models and things like that these basics of the basics that every junior does when they're trying to learn programming for the first time I still do that and I'm going to continue doing that forever because it's a very efficient way for me to like sort of go move away from all the domain logic and all the complexity of a large scale system and just focus on the fundamentals because once I have those fundamentals in place I can add the other complexity on top because if I skip that part it becomes even more complicated to understand what's going on in the system. Have a great day.